Hi everyone, this is Aaron for Zolotech, and we're going to review the Droid Razor Max. The Droid Razor Max uh, comes out not too many months after the original Droid Razor, and is a really nice phone. It adds some incredible battery life. Uh, let's talk about it here a little bit. So here's the Razor Max, here's the Razor, and they're pretty similar on the front here. You have a little bit different bezel around the outside of the Max, different color at the top where the Motorola logo is, and it's slightly thicker. Here's the Max on the left here. And slightly thicker. Other than that, uh, there's really not too much difference between the two phones. Overall, though, let's talk about specs and then we'll go into the phone itself. It has a 4.3 inch display with a 540 by 960 resolution. Uh, it's a Super AMOLED capacitive touchscreen, so it's really nice to look at. Not fantastic, but nice. Uh, it's not a great touchscreen as far as the quality of the pixels and the, the look go. But overall, it's pretty decent. The battery is what we're really interested in, uh, which is provides about 21 and a half hours of talk time, which is pretty incredible, with a 3300 milliamp hour battery. So to put that in perspective, most phones have about a 1300 milliamp hour battery. This has almost three times that, so it provides some pretty serious battery time. So it has a dual core 1.2 gigahertz. TI OMAP processor inside of it. It also has 16 gigs of built-in storage and it's expandable here on the side. It's a 4G LTE device so you can see there's the 4G SIM card, there's the micro SD card for expanded storage and overall it's pretty nice. On the back we have an 8 megapixel camera that records in 1080p or 720p and on the front we have a forward-facing 1.3 megapixel camera. So overall pretty nice but it does run Android 2.3 gingerbread, which I really don't get. I don't know why people are still releasing phones with the old version of Android on it. Maybe their version isn't ready yet, but I think it's a little bit ridiculous at this point that they haven't put uh, Android 4.0 ice cream sandwich on there. It just seems to speed so much up and makes it so much nicer. But other than that, it's a pretty nice device. And when I said serious battery life, I mean really ridiculous battery life. So in my testing, I was actually able to use this as a Wi-Fi hotspot for about one to two hours. And if anyone's done that before, they know that drains battery pretty quickly. So I did that. I went away on a trip, used it for about two hours as a Wi-Fi hotspot. After those two hours, it kind of sat in standby for a while. And then after it sat in standby, I used it at night to listen to music throughout the night for two nights straight. Then, on the way home, I used it as a GPS a little bit for about one to one and a half hours. And at that point, I had a half a battery left. So after using it as a Wi-Fi hotspot, using it for music, streaming Google Music, it wasn't music on the phone. It was actually pulling data uh, through 3G at that point because I wasn't in a 4G area. And then it streamed music for two nights straight for about six to eight hours each, eh, probably less, probably more like six hours each. And then a GPS and music on the way home. Pretty impressive. Uh, it's The battery life's incredible on this thing. So it's about three times that of the normal smartphone, just to give you an idea. Uh, if you have a razor here and you put these next to each other, this is going to be dead in about a third of the time. So overall it's it's pretty nice. And the thing that you would think might be a pain is this little added extra battery, but it actually makes the phone feel a little bit better in the hand than this super thin phone. This feels almost w like you're going to break it. This gives it enough heft where it actually feels pretty comfortable. And I'm not sure I mentioned, but it's a 4.3 inch display. And uh, overall just really nice to use. I Like I said, I wish it had ice cream sandwich on it, but I showed a picture on Instagram, for any of you that follow me, of the screen, and that was of the lock screen, so it looked like it had a crosshatch in it, uh, but let me let me bring it in here so you can see. Once my camera refocuses here, there we go. So you can see the screen isn't horrible, but it, I've seen better screens. For whatever reason, it just doesn't seem to be... Uh, is nice and I'm not sure why that is. Overall though the whole phone feels super fast. I know this this does seem to have a little nicer screen than the the Razer itself but the phone itself seems super fast. Uh, it does a good job. The camera is okay. I mean it's actually pretty good. Uh, it, it takes pictures much faster than say the Bionic. 
So it's not bad or anything, but it's not fantastic. But if you want a phone with incredible battery life that runs Android, this is the phone to get. Still super thin. It, in fact, at this point, it's thinner than an iPhone 4, to give you some comparison. It's hard to tell next to the original Razer because it is so incredibly thin. But it, it's thinner than an iPhone 4 at this point, and about the same or a little bit more right here, This where it gets a little bit thicker. Overall, though, it's just a, a really nice uh, device when you need battery life and you don't need to bring an extra battery. That said, you can't change out the battery either. That's probably the worst part about this, is the back has uh, a Kevlar coating. The whole phone is actually coated in Liquipel or something like that that prevents you from getting it wet. So you wouldn't need to send this phone into Liquipel if you've ever seen that. In theory, you could dunk this in the water and have no problem, but I wouldn't try it. Uh, but you can't replace the battery in here, but you really don't need to because it lasts so long. If you needed something, you could buy an external battery. But if you need, if you use that much battery, you're going to be pretty pleased with this overall. And I really hope this is a trend that smartphones go in, this incredible battery life. Uh, I hope Apple uh, does something like that along with uh, some of the Windows phones. It would be great to see an incredibly long life battery in all, every phone so you don't have to charge it every single night or halfway through the day. But overall, though, pretty nice phone. Uh, it varies in price. The actual price is $300 on contract, but it can vary depending on where you get it. I'll provide a link in the comments or in the description below. If you have any comments on the phone, please go ahead and place comments. If you've used it, if you own one, what you think about one. And I'd love to hear what you have to say about them. Uh, for people that actually use these day in and day out as their only device, I'd, I'd love to hear what you have to say about that. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please go ahead and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.